Good morning, family. God bless you. So I want to share um, something on brokenness this morning. Um, I was listening to a good sermon this morning, and what came to my spirit was, actually what came to my spirit while I was in prayer, was the fact that when I was sharing yesterday about all the trials and tribulations that people are already facing in 2018, today is January 7th, 2018, and it kind of made me see that maybe some of us, some of you, people you know, people in the church are being broken, and the purpose of brokenness is so many different reasons, and so I want to take a journey with you to give you a clearer understanding of why you may be being broken and it ain't even an attack it's actually something that god is allowing or doing to get you closer to him so lord i ask for wisdom for spiritual understanding for spiritual guidance may i be removed out the way that your glory and your word may go forth out of my mouth through the holy spirit giving revelation, encouragement, and uplifting understanding of your word and the purpose behind their brokenness. So Heavenly Father, use my body, use my mouth, use my mind, my heart, and your words to come out of my mouth to not only educate and encourage myself, but my brothers and sisters as well. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's read something real quick to start us off this morning. Luke chapter 22, verse 31. And the Lord said, put your name here, Ronnie, Ronnie, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Now, just right there, he's telling Peter that the devil's asked for him. Now, here's something interesting. The devil asked for Peter, which meant there must have been something Peter was doing that the devil wanted him. Verse 32, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. Now, just that alone in its own, let's take an understanding walk of this. Now, when we get broken, we are getting broken for service. We're getting broken that God can take out of us what's worldly, what's misguiding us, what's misleading us, what's keeping us connected to worldly people, worldly ways, worldly desires, because God has an anointing and a ministry and a service to do through us. But a lot of times we're connected to people, places, and things that we shouldn't be. So in this factor, Peter, Peter was always thinking, you know, he's God, Jesus is right hand man, but there was so much of Peter in Peter that he needed to be broken. Now remember that God, he knows what he's doing. So in order for this whole thing to take place, if you go into, um, into, I think it's first Corinthians, um, chapter 12. It talks about how when Paul was um, when Paul was being used by God, right, and God was giving him all these deep revelations that he said that there was a, a a thorn given to him, and that this thorn was given to him as a, a through the through the enemy that it was Satan that delivered this thorn to him. And when this happened, he said it was so that he wouldn't get prideful. And a lot of times that's kind of what happens to us. We get caught in our spirit and we get prideful. Um, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse, uh, so we'll start at verse 6. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me, and least I should be exalted above measure 
through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in my flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. So there's times that God will allow the enemy into our life. And it looks like the enemy is attacking us, but God's actually using the enemy to, as he did Peter, to sift him to get him out of him, to get us out of us. You know, there's a lot of people, right, that are trying to get into ministry, right? But there's stuff that's in their life that is still sinful, still worldly, and God is trying to get those people, places and things out of those people. Just because you go to church, just because you go to Bible study, doesn't mean anything because these are things that we do if we're not sitting in there to be transformed by the renewing of our mind if our hearts aren't being converted if we're not being convicted and we're still living the sinful life but we're just not telling nobody those are the areas that God is trying to attack to attack to get you out of you so you may not be under a, 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 a spiritual attack from the devil you may be being used, God may be using the enemy to work on you as he did here in the book of Joel chapter 2 verse 25. It says that this great army that the Lord sent upon them, that whole purpose was to get them to come back to him. A lot of times we are in the faith and we're walking close to God and something happens and we kind of detour and so our detour, so you got to understand, so we start going the opposite direction. God got to get us back. It's like that hook on the staff. He's got to bring us back. So sometimes our brokenness, and it, sometimes the brokenness that we are feeling could be being used of our children, our employment, our health, our wealth, you know, the ministry relationships. Like me, I, I'm single, right? I... I I want a wife, but still I have to have God's wife. Even the sister that I posted pictures of, we're in the faith. We both have ministries, but that's, we're friends. We're brothers and sisters in the Lord. But still as moving forward, I got to make sure that I'm still completing the will of God for my life because maybe having a wife or a relationship at this moment may hinder that, that uh, ministry, right? Or maybe you're trying to uh, rekindle your marriage with your husband or your wife, but there's still sin in your life. There's still things that need to be done before God can restore that. Remember, God is working in us, through us, by us, and for us, for the glory and the kingdom of heaven. It's not about us. It's about what God is trying to do to us. And sometimes it's like when I ex expressed before, when you break that light, that stick and then the light shines well what shines in you when you're broken can god break you and people see that you're still keeping the faith in the lord that you're still pressing on that you're saying nevertheless thy will be done when jesus was broken in the garden of gethsemane his fleshly man said father if this cup could pass me let it go let it i'm i don't want to do this but his spiritual message, but nevertheless, thy will be done. So as you're going through this stage of life and you're in this brokenness of, of life, look at it this way. What is God trying to get out of me? Where, where is sin? When the Bible says, examine yourself, sit back and say, Lord, where, where is sin at in my life? It could be your thought process. You could be doing very well in eight out of 10 areas in your spiritual life, but those two areas, so God is working on those two areas, right? And so even in your life, when you're like, your kids are going through stuff and you're wondering why are my kids going through this? Why are these things happening? And it's breaking you, right? And it's really the interesting part is that it's breaking you, but God is dealing with them. And the only way God could deal with them is by doing whatever he's allowing to have happen to them. And as parents, we feel it because they're our children. But we have to understand that God has to get to them too. Re remember what broke you to bring you to God. Something happens 
nine times out of ten pretty bad that makes us come to God. And God allows those broken things to happen. And on another level, too, you got to understand that when this thorn was given to Paul, it was given as a blessing. And, and he caught it at the end because he said, um, he, I mean, hear what he said. Brokenness has a lot of different meanings. Um, once again, he, he's saying in, in 2 Corinthians 12, in verse 8, For this thing I besought the Lord three times, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And as he goes on to talk, he, he starts to realize that in these areas that he's being broken, that he's going through what he's going through, his focus is like where I'm weak at right now in this area, where I'm being broken right now, Christ's power, Christ's glory, Christ's strength that's pushing me forward is being revealed in me and through me. And it's no longer I who am pushing this through me, but it's Christ that's guiding me. It's Christ that's leading me because I'm weak in this area. I'm broken in this area. So where you're broken at right now, it may be um, a relationship or a marriage that's seems like it's being broken right now but god may be on that relationship to be broken because he's trying to get to one or both of you to start seeing the relationship in a spiritual fashion that you could start looking at your marriage or your your relationship or your engagement as how is god wanting my relationship to be maybe i'm too carnal in this area of this relationship maybe i'm too fleshly in this era too lustfully maybe there's areas that god is trying to get holy and pure in the relationship so he's allowing it to be broken to bring us back to him to bring us to our knees to get closer to him even with your children you know you want to wire your children doing this well what type of relationship do you have with god i always tell people in your relationship, personal, male and female, or your children, or a mother and a father, grandparents, a lot of times I say, however your relationship with God is, it's kind of how your relationship with everybody else is. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So if I want my other relationships to be right, I have to make sure that this relationship with God is right and for those of us or those of you that lost people within the last three months that went to heaven i find myself about, about doing about to do another funeral i just did one last month um i have two marriages to do this year and i'm seeing was just sharing with god like the actual pastoral ship of my relationship with god is coming forth but when we lose somebody and they go to heaven, we grieve them. It's a heaviness on our hearts or your hearts because you've lost this person and it's, it's a struggle. The easiest thing that I could tell to someone is that, remember, they made it home. And you're broken right now and your brokenness is really that separation from that person. But if you say, okay, I'm, I have a time to grieve. Don't allow that grieving be, to become a stronghold, to put you in a bondage of depression because that depression will keep you from God. And then God got to come in and do something else to get you back to him because he doesn't want you to stay in that bondage because it's like like when, um, when uh, 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 David, when David and Bathsheba, when they lost the kid, he 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 was fasting and all that while the while the kid was going through what he was going through. But as soon as the kid died, he cleaned up, shaved up, and got right back where he was supposed to be. And everybody was tripping out. And he said, "Well, he's gone, and now it's I got to stay the course so I could be with him again. So don't allow the the separation or the death to take you off course because your job is still to get back so you two could be reunited up in heaven." So I'm saying all this to say that brokenness has a lot of different meanings. And brokenness is actually a good thing. And, and it never feels good when we're going through it. Never does. But there's a scripture in the Bible that says, Chastisement 
is not it's not good but later on it brings much fruit so as you're being broken you're learning to find out where you're not right in right sentence with God or you may be getting broken to go to a new level like Pete like Paul he's having all these revelations he's doing all this ministry and he could have got real prideful like the devil you know he could have got real prideful. why it says never put a new Christian that's new to the faith into some type of leadership role because then they get prideful and then now their their arrogance and their controlling and all that stuff comes out and makes them fall so the brokenness that you may be going through right now seek God seek God he says in Proverbs 3 5 and 6 trust the Lord with all your heart lean not to your own understanding acknowledge me God in everything and I will direct your path Seek ye first. If you're seeking God, he's going to tell you what's going on. He's going to guide you. If you're examining your walk, you're going to see where you're weak at. You're going to see where you have that sin that nobody else knows you're doing but God. And God is like, hold on, I can't really use you. I can't really bless you. I can't really multiply you. I can't really build the ministry through you. I can't build that church through you. I can't strengthen that marriage. I can't strengthen that relationship to become marriage. I can't strengthen that relationship with you and your kids because there's still sin that's blocking all these things. So God is, is constantly trying to get us to see. He says, humble yourself before me before I have to humble you. And that humbleness that God does is allowing the brokenness to come in. And again, the brokenness could be because you're in sin. Brokenness could be because God is trying to build the ministry or impart spiritual gifts to you. There's a lot of different reasons for brokenness. So if you take the time out to think like maybe I'm being broken right now and it's not a bad thing. God is working because God, even when we're in sin and God breaks us and he's chastening us, is to bring us back as we're growing in ministry and God is breaking us to give us new revelations to build our faith. As you're in ministry, God needs to build your faith because you're going to be ministering to people who, that have been broken in many areas and you're going to have to be the one to encourage them and uplift them and that's going to become come through your brokenness and you're going to be able to have that same compassion so heavenly father i pray that this word of encouragement this morning on brokenness will uplift my brothers and sisters and that they will look deep inside to see where they are being broken and the purpose of their brokenness and i give you praise honor and glory in jesus name amen god bless you all